we are meeting with Ryan Dick to Dirk, right? Dirk. We're meeting with Ryan Dirk today. Um, this young man had a surgery with us uh, some uh, ten, ten, ten months ago. Ten months ago, and we are gladly meeting him here again in, in, in kind of a follow-up consultation. Uh, Ryan, can you tell us what actually um, was your story? What happened to you, um, and why did you consult uh, us in Germany? Uh, well, I, I broke my neck playing uh, football, American football, uh, in 2009, so about five years ago, and uh, I spent uh, kind of the next five years of that process trying to figure out, you know, what the damage was done and what had happened to me, and uh, with growing pain and, and, and immobility, losing lots of uh, ability to move, and uh, and so I, I got to a point where I was so desperate for an answer, and, and I started looking kind of outside of our system. But uh, yeah, at that point, I didn't know how serious it was. I just knew that my neck was was severely damaged, and that it was getting worse uh, every year. And what actually was your diagnosis? Uh, my diagnosis um, when I finally met with you guys, I guess, was I we discovered that I had uh, fractured my C4 vertebrae, so my vertebrae, my neck, uh, compression fracture. Uh, I compressed uh, the disc uh, below that as well as the vertebrae below that, and so. Um, the biggest thing outside of that fracture was I had torn a spinal ligament, and it also uh, I also had um, uh, stenosis and femoral narrowing, so my spine was getting narrower. So I was starting to feel kind of the nerve pain and the effects of that as well. Uh, and then I had a missed curvature of my neck. My neck was in a kyphotic curvature, so I had a, the wrong curve to my neck, which was causing a lot of structural problems. Did you have severe symptoms? I did. I, I think uh, I've always said. The day I got hurt, uh, I never felt a day without pain since that that moment, uh, mm -hmm. and so it progressed worse and worse. And I'd say the last two years, and specifically the last five, 18 months, uh, were almost unbearable. I couldn't sleep, couldn't work, um, couldn't do anything normal. Uh, it was just it was it, it was uh, unbearable. Well, what were you doing? What are you doing for a living? Or what way? Uh, I was working. I work with young people actually. I run a fitness center, so I work with inner city uh, youth, and so it was a very active job. Lots of uh, athletic, athletic events and sports and late weightlifting and supervising big groups and so I, you know, high energy. Mm -hmm. And so, but by the end, I would I would work for an hour, uh, lie in my office for 45 minutes on my floor, uh, go back, you know, and that was my day. And then eventually, I was unable to do that. So it was it was impossible to do my job. It was impossible to live at that point. Then, what kind of advice were you given? What kind of surgery did you undergo? I, you know, I met with a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people that wanted to help me, uh, and and I guess the problem was that they just didn't have an answer for my specific situation, and and you know, the frustration of, of of kind of waiting for the next person and waiting for the next consult and waiting for the next results was very difficult for me. I think a lot of people relate to that that are in my situation, and so it, you know, I didn't I didn't get a, a real clean answer of what was going to happen to me. Just that something bad had happened and, and that I was going to have to live with it, mm -hmm. and. And something in me said there was more. I knew there was more to the story. I, I, I it was worse than they said, and uh, and uh, you know, I, I just, I guess, I never gave up hope that there'd be some sort of answer. And so, uh, but yeah, the, the, the outlook for me was that I was going to look at, you know, they wouldn't touch me. I was, I'm 29 at this point. I was 26 when it happened, or 25. And so, there was no prognosis of surgery. There was, there was. They said, you know, we're not going to touch you for quite a while. And I suspect now that I would have been. I would have lost my ability to move before they would have done anything for me. So, so you were in a kind of a dilemma, and then you did you come to Germany? How did you meet the uh, neurosurgeon Dr. Lahaus at the ONZ? Yeah, I had a, just an oh, I'll call it a blessing. It's not even a luck. Good luck. I had a blessing of just uh, my dad's a principal. He had a teacher that had lower back surgery, and you can Google things on the internet. You can find things, and and you know you're not sure if they're if they're believable. But to meet someone in person that had had a, a lower back disc replacement done uh, opened my mind up to the possibility. And, and as it happened, uh, we came across the news that you guys were, ONZ was coming out in a few months from then. So I kind of hurried and got all my information together and uh, I met, met, met them here in Portage. And, and uh, I walked into the meeting pretty, pretty doubtful, pretty, pretty hesitant. I almost didn't show up because I was so used to, to nothing happening. Mm. And, and uh, so I had the chance to meet. It was September 4th, 2013. I'll never forget that day. And you know that's the day my life changed. So you packed your suitcase and came over to Germany for surgery. And uh, what kind of surgery was done? Uh, I had, a, I guess, a hybrid surgery. So they, I have a fusion and a disc replacement done. And so um, the first part of that, I guess, the part, of the bigger part of it was they had to remove a whole vertebrae for me. So it's called the carpectomy. 
and so the vertebrae was removed, my C4 is gone, it was too diseased to keep around, and uh, I'm grateful that thing's gone, I can feel that, that difference. And so I have a fusion from C3 to C5 with a, with a synthetic vertebrae there, that I have uh, a one level disc replacement with a M6 cervical disc, and, uh, and then my neck is aligned perfectly and straight. Uh, I grew an inch actually after my surgery, which I'm real proud of. My wife can wear heels now. <laughs> Then you we stayed in Germany in a foreign country uh, and probably uh, a mixture of excitement and anxiety yeah. when you arrived there. How did how did you meet? How did you experience the staff at the hospital, the nurses, and the the entire procedure? Yeah, you know it's it's just an absolute first class experience. I mean, from 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 the first meeting here with with Ken Hebert, who is a liaison here, uh, to meeting with Malti with you and with and with, with Dr. Lahaus here to. You know, to, to being in Germany, it was like it was it was it's it's intimidating when you go there, but as soon as you get there, people are incredible. People speak English, which is nice. Uh, you're warm, warmly welcomed, and you're taken care of. And uh, it is just, it's an incredible. Uh, I've always said to Jen, if I need any other surgery, which I hope I won't, I would have a hard time having surgery anywhere else. It was that good, and so uh, you just felt you felt the confidence of everybody around you. That, 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 you know, they were confident in what they were doing for you and, and it, you know, you can't help but get, you know, taken into that. And it was an incredible experience. And did you meet your surgeon prior to surgery and after surgery? Did he explain thoroughly what his plan was and why it was done? Yeah, that was, that was a great part of it. We had all our tests done and, and uh, you got to meet with, with the surgeon the day before and just go over the last minute uh, review of things and, and make sure we're feeling good. And then, you know, I met uh, with Ilhaus, Dr. Ilhaus in the morning of my surgery and, and he, and said hi to me and one of the things I'll never forget is he gave me time when I was on the operating table he, just to have my peace before you know we went forward and I just thought that was a incredibly personal touch and then following the surgery yeah you know he was there the same night to, to come say hi to me as was Ken who was also in Germany and so just check up on me and and, and, and then you know our care in the hospital was, was amazing the doctors check up on you every morning and afternoon and the nursing staff was just so so sympathetic and uh, the food was good as well that's always a positive and so, you know, I, I, I just have nothing bad to say about the process. And then the hotel stay as well, right near the hospital was great. All our ONZ arranged all our transportation with our taxiing and different things. And uh, they just take the stress out of being in a new country for a scary surgery. Uh, they take the stress out of it and allow you just to, to, to do what needs to be done. How was your experience with the uh, follow-up? Were you able to get in touch with the ONZ staff in regards to follow-up? or? reviewing of follow-up x-rays or even meeting after surgery? Yeah, yeah, we got to do some some uh, chatting back and forth uh, over the months and, and we had some kind of scheduled uh, check-ins with x-rays and so I'd have x-rays done at a given time and then submit them and then get an email back just saying, you know, giving you the go-ahead to, to the next stage of recovery, which is huge because especially out here, there's, there was no one that really could really inform us, you know, on how I was doing because they hadn't seen uh, what was done for me anywhere here in the country. and so. That was really reassuring, and then the opportunity today to sit here and uh, have a 10-month follow-up, and then it's like meeting old friends. It's like being encouraged and, and comforted that things are going well, and uh, and also a way to kind of reconnect and give back if I can anyway, uh, which I would love to do. Well, thanks very much, Brian, for sharing your experience with us, and I'm sure that um, it's an encouraging story for those who might need similar interventions or just need a, need a second opinion, uh, would you be willing to share your story with others who are, say, in similar shoes you wear prior to surgery? Yeah, I would, I would uh, there was nothing I'd like more than to be able to share my story. And I think it's, I just want to give hope to people who are sitting there struggling so much without an answer. And, and to say there is an answer, it's, it may be here, it may not, but at least you'll get an honest appraisal here with ONZ. and and. And the fundraising and the things you have to do to get there, they're so worth it. Uh, don't let anything get in the way of, of, of doing that. So yeah, if I can share my story with anyone, you know, get a hold of me, social media, where we can hook that up. But I'd love to be part of the process for other people as well. Thanks very much.